So, today we will discuss amplitude modulation. Uh, Let us first ask the question why do I require modulation? Why cannot I do directly the baseband transmission? We have seen the reasons for modulation. One reason is that the, the baseband transmission if you were to use RF channel then the size of the antenna required would be very large. So, if you take speed signal the maximum frequency you have is 3 kilohertz about or 3.3 kilohertz and if you try to calculate the antenna size assuming that it should be at least one tenth of the wavelength of the frequency which you want to transmit then this would run in terms of kilometers. So, you would require that you shift this baseband transmission to a higher frequency so that the size of the antenna required would be a reasonable one. Another reason is that even if you were not to use the RF channel and say let us say you want to do direct transmission using say copper wire. Now, most of the time you will find that even this kind of channels have frequency characteristics which do not match with the baseband transmission signal characteristic. So, usually the baseband signal characteristic of the low pass nature and the channel characteristic is the band pass one. So, you would require to match the two frequency characteristic. So, let us first look at the components of a modulator and the receiver. So, the simplest transmitter we could have is in the form of a modulator. You have a message signal and so this is known as a modulating signal and you have the sinusoidal carrier wave and it is fed to a modulator or transmitter and the output is what is known as modulated wave. And at the receiver you would have the output of the channel being fed to a demodulator and the task of the demodulator is to strip off the carrier wave and give an estimate of the message signal. Since we are discussing analog communication, our task at the receiver is to preserve the fidelity of the analog signal. Now, there are different kinds of modulations. We have what is known as amplitude modulation then we have what is known as angle modulation. There are two forms of angle modulation, frequency modulation and the phase modulation. Let us take an example of an amplitude modulated signal. So, here I have an example. I have a modulating signal. I have a carrier frequency. The, the carrier frequency will be much much higher than the bandwidth of the modulating signal. And if you do amplitude modulation, in this figure we are talking about the amplitude modulation with the carrier. We will see that there are different forms of amplitude modulation. So, what is being shown here in this figure is double sideband with the carrier and this we will call it as normal amplitude modulation. So, if you look at the amplitude of the carrier signal, it changes 
proportional to your modulating signal. So, the amplitude here is replica of the modulating signal and this is achieved by a simple circuit shown here in the form of a multiplier. You have modulating signal, you have an oscillator, you multiply and this would be followed by another block where you insert a carrier and then you will get this kind of a modulated signal. And if you look at the frequency spectrum of this, you will get for this kind of a case, you will get your original spectrum of the signal shifted to a new frequency decided by the carrier frequency Fc and there will be also a presence of carrier in the form of the impulse. Without the this impulse, it would be a form of amplitude modulation which is known as double sideband suppressed carrier. It has its own advantages, we will study this later on. And in this slide, I we will show you the different form of modulations. So, here I have a carrier signal, I have a modulating signal in the form of a sine wave. The frequency of the sine wave is much much lower than the carrier frequency. So, this is the amplitude modulated signal which I have here. So, you look at the amplitude of the carrier wave it resembles the modulating signal and here you have the frequency modulated signal. The frequency of the carrier changes in accordance to the modulating signal. So, at this juncture when the modulating signal is at the highest peak, the frequency of the carrier signal changes to the maximum value. So, you see here there are more number of oscillations, the periodic this zero crossings have come closer, whereas at this point, this modulating signal takes the maximum negative value. So, you will find that the carrier's frequency decreases, and here you see that the oscillation of the carrier frequency is the smallest or during the complete period of modulation. So, an example of frequency modulated signal ok. So, let us look at some of the mathematics of this amplitude modulation. So, let me denote the carrier to be C t A c cos 2 pi f c t, my message signal m t here, my modulated signal I will call it as st. It is assumed to be of this form when I write it A c 1 plus mu m t cos 2 pi f c t. Here I am assuming that my m t signal, the modulus of m t signal is less than 1 and the value of mu is less than 1. So, in that case mu m t this value will be always less than 1. So, what it implies that this quantity will be always positive. So, if that is the case, then if I assume this mu less than 1, it is a modulation and if mu is greater than 1, what you get is an over modulation, but we will never operate in this region. It is a useless for us if you are operating mu greater than 1. So, you will never do this. This mu, when I write in this form, this mu is known as the modulation index and sometimes it is also expressed in terms of percentage. So, if I multiply mu by 100, I will get modulation index in percentage. So, let us see the effect of mu less than 1 and mu greater than 1 and that is depicted in this figure out here. So, again I show you the my signal m t, I assume my mod of m t is less than 1, but here I show you two cases, one 
where mu is less than 1. If mu is less than 1, then you see that the amplitude of the carrier out here always remains positive, correct. Right? And if my mu is greater than 1, then what happens is that when it is likely that at this point this is going to become negative because mu is larger than 1. Now, 1 plus mu empty is going to become negative. So, at that time what is going to happen that my phase of my carrier will flip by 180 degrees. So, that is what you see that this point here instead of continuing like this the phase of the thing has changed and it has become like this. So, in the process if you see basically what has happened to the envelope, the envelope has got distorted. So, instead of going like this down, the envelope has become like this, correct. Right? So, this is basically the case for the over modulation, right. So, we will see that this is uh, if you do over modulation, it is not that you cannot recover the signal, you can recover the signal, but you will require a little more complicated type of recovery based on what is known as coherent receiver and uh, coherent receivers are more costlier and it does not serve a purpose when you do this kind of modulation with m mu larger than 1 ok. So, let us look at the uh, spectrum of the modulated signal. So, I have my m t which is m f s t s f s t is equal to a c 1 mu plus cos 2 pi f c t. So, if I expand it I get it in this form and then if I try to calculate the Fourier spectrum for this is as follows for this is given here the spectrum of this and the spectrum of this by modulation theorem is m f minus f c and m f plus f c. So, what this implies that if you look at the spectrum I will get something like this. So, this is my spectrum of my message signal and after modulation it becomes like this. Uh, you have an impulse here corresponding to the carrier and you get this kind this basically repeats at f c and minus f c. It should be remembered that for empty real signal m f will satisfy the Hermitian property. What it implies that the amplitude spectrum will be E 1 function and the phase spectrum will be the odd function. So, given this portion I can always reconstruct this based on this property or given this I can reconstruct this. So, what this implies that in this case when you get this two bands here like this one of this band is actually useless. Anyway the band below F c is known as the lower side band. So, this is a lower side band and corresponding to this band we have a lower side band here and we have an upper side band and corresponding to this upper side band it is here. So, for reconstruction at the receiver you see that I have to get back my spectrum to 0 frequency and I require only one of this band either this band or this band. So, this is upper side band or lower side band given one of this band I should be able to reconstruct back my signal. So, this is a spectrum of AMV. So, this we will study in detail in the next class. Remember as a communication engineer there are two constraints power and the bandwidth. So, this kind of modulation we see basically that we transmit power with the carrier. Actually the power transmitted with the carrier is useless because we do not re require it. All my message is in this two bands in fact only in this one of the band. So, what is of importance to me is the power only in this band 
but in this kind of modulation I do need to feed some power at the carrier also that is one thing has happened and other thing that has happened is that earlier the bandwidth required for my message signal was B but now it has become 2B or 2W correct. So we will see basically how to reduce this carrier power and how to reduce this bandwidth requirement of the modulated signal. Thank you.